<laughs> Get all this extra. Money. And welcome back to No Good Rolls, Only Good Role Playing. Uh, I'm your DM, Kurt Hamburger. And uh, you can see I've wrangled a, a table full of people again here to join us. They're all going to throw some dice, hopefully not at me. But uh, I'm just going to go over quickly where we left off last game, and then I'm going to get everybody to say a few words on, on what you're doing and what your characters are. Just to kind of fill us back in, because it's been about two weeks, three weeks since we, we played. So... You guys have just recently finished kind of dealing with the problems at Night Stony. They had been raided by stone giants who threw the rocks down and kind of crushed the, crushed the town and the townsfolk fled and you went and you saved them from the, uh, the goblins in the caves and you came back and you had some problems with raiders and orcs and while that was happening, few of you had noticed but there was a, a tower riding a cat or Tower riding a castle riding a cloud. It was awkward. <laughs> uh, With a hat on it. <laughs> you can see it on the table there, actually. And it was like a thousand feet above. And as you were working with or defeating the bandits and raiders, stairs were forming and coming down. And you climbed the stairs. Who was it that brought the donkey? <laughs> that was a sad. Gotta have those supplies, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you came back up and you met this cloud giant Zephyrus, and this is his tower, and he invited you to travel with him, and he was going to take you to Tribor. Tribor is several hundred miles away from where you are, so you have accepted him. Well, three days into the journey, you'd come across, well, some cultists riding with vultures, and they were trying to entice Zephyrus into their, into their, uh, their world idea. <laughs> you, uh, you, you, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Discouraged. Discouraged, persuaded, both good words. <laughs> persuaded uh, Zephyrus that that was a, a poor idea at best. Yeah, that and was Yon C. Bin. Yon C. Bin, yeah. the evil prince of air. Yes. Stand up, fella. Yeah. He's antsy. A little behind on his child support, though. <laughs> he, uh, he sent them on their way and they were a little angry, so they threw something down on the ground. And, uh, walked away from the tower. That's kind of where we ended it at the last game. Uh, so while you're you're there though, it, the, the cloud is moving, but it's not super fast. It's still a lot easier than, than being on foot. What are you guys doing? Because you're, you're stuck on the main level. It's fairly large, but it's a hundred foot climb to even get close to getting in the second level. So on the first level, what are you guys, what are you guys doing for the next day or two years. Uh, All right, so uh, Samber the Dry has been, uh, he's been trying to take care of his donkey because, well, Sir John carries all of the booze. Nobody brought stuff for Sir John because, you know, yeah. he didn't think about that, not the important bit. But we've got this enchanted bowl of fruit. So he's been, you know, pulling the melon-sized grapes off the stems and, and peeling apples and, you know, so the peels go and the stems and other garbage parts of the fruit that's, you know, maybe a little more roughage up to it. So he's been, he's been working on that. Um, uh, Samur himself, is, he's a fairly tall guy. He's, uh, he definitely looks like he's been ill. He has that kind of wasted look to him. He used to be a bigger guy, now he's lost some weight. He's pretty pale. Um, there's definitely a, a, a reek about him, an air, if you will, of the, of the alcohol. Maybe a tinge of the sea on, on, the, odd, on the odd moments. Spends a lot of his time, he's, uh, he's trying to replenish his supplies. Turns out fruit makes it okay source of alcohol, who'd have thought that? Um, so there's a distillery mm -hmm. sitting just outside of the uh, outside the walls <laughs> on the edge of the cloud there. Been set up, yep. <laughs> Absolutely. This is my one grape wine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Single source. Um, <laughs> Love it. Samber doesn't. Uh, he, he hasn't really eaten anything himself. He he mostly finds himself wandering away around meal times. Um, more of a solitary person then. 
more than happy to to uh, to swap stories and tell jokes in the evening when we're gathered around. You know, uh, assume I assume we're sitting on maybe three pillows or something scattered on the floor because they're huge. You uh, can take the seat cushions off of yes. the, off the couple chairs and use those. Yeah, and I mean, they're big, <laughs> so. I'd ask you to reach one for me. <laughs> I think we're all relying on um, <laughs> on Jinx to uh, to scramble up the chairs and pull them down for mm-hmm. us. Uh, yeah. So um, the other thing is during the nights, Samber mostly just sits awake and and you know s- stares off into nothing, slowly drinking a little bit. Just, you know, keep himself warm, I guess. Yeah, that's Amber. So, Annika, what's, what have you been doing the last few days? So, the, one of the first things that Annika did is she set up a little training area for herself, and it's very, like, even and, and organized and set out. She's got her longsword and her longsword cleaning station. She's been teaching Jen, Ginny about, um, you know, taking care of her weapon and stuff like that. Um, every morning, she has a very regimented uh, routine. She does 10 push-ups, 10 jumping jacks, 10... And squats and then she's like moving on to sword practice she's got like prayers that have to be done right at like 11 o'clock she's got a very strict routine she's been following that along her armor is well shined because she's got downtime to do that her weapon is very well taken care of um and so uh, so yeah that's pretty much what she does um every once in a while she gives samra the side eye and uh, keeps an eye on him as he wanders away during meal times. Like a like a hey baby side eye or a what uh, the hell side uh, eye. Uh, 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 I'm not entirely sure about you, and I need to say something to you, but I'm working on it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Um, and then. Yeah, uh, so she's she's quite tall, um, quite athletic, so she's been doing like pull-ups on the chair every once in a while to climb up and get stuff and um, like trying to like help Jinx out, like, you know, talking to him about justice and how it's not nice to steal things. <laughs> oh, lectures with Annika. Yeah. That's yes. the entertainment. <laughs> I can just see Jinx's eyes rolling back. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, yeah, so, and uh, she's been trying to like see over the side as much as she can um, to like kind of figure out where we're going and where we're at and making sure that things are okay and not going off the rails. Jinx, what are you been up to? Uh, scampering around, you know, just being Jasper. Um, <laughs> climbing up the tables, getting food for people, tossing it down. Pushing the cushions off the couch like a cat would normally do. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> um, pretty much it. Uh, just, you know, at night times when we're gathered around the fire, stuff singing songs of healing. And you don't actually get to have a fire, because Zephyrus has specifically asked you no not, fires. Not, to have a, not, even, not even out in the clouds? The outside is fine, but okay. Well, that's where I roast my marshmallow. Okay. <laughs> oh, I like it. <laughs> um, so yeah, just singing and doing my regular entertaining and trying to f- see. Um, we did grab that bag from the front door, so I don't know if we've opened that yet. So I will get to that. We'll get to that. Has, but, yeah. has described what they've been up to. Okay. Um, Can- but yeah, that's pretty much what I've been doing is just helping out around grabbing stuff that it's easier for me to climb up and do than most others, so. Can you paint me a picture of what Jasper looks like? Um, Jasper is uh, super tall, like eight, almost almost eight feet tall. Lanky, though, right? Really, really lanky. Like, so if you've seen the New Discovery, uh, uh, with the tall guy who has the weird feet, the yeah. co-captain or number one or whatever, like, Super, super skinny. Like, I'm only 160, 170 pounds, but almost eight feet tall. Sure. So, like, okay. super stretched out leopardy kind of lanky. So, okay. Um, yeah. Spots then? Uh, yeah, yeah. Just okay. like, just like I have here. Yeah, black and All white right. spots. Uh, yeah. They help him hide on the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> I see that, yeah. <laughs> His natural uh, habitat. Yes. Yeah. My natural habit. Jeannie, what have you been up to the last couple of days? 
Well, I have been fastidiously cooking and helping prepare meals, making sure the donkey gets the scraps. Um, when I've got a moment sparring with Annika, she kicks my butt regularly. She's got reach. <laughs> she does have reach, but she's teaching me how to get inside the guard, which is very useful because that's kind of what I've got to do. Um, very grateful to JJ for knocking things down so I can reach them. And uh, in the meantime, I'd, I'd love to use uh, my herbalism kit and produce a few potions of healing if we have uh, the money for it. Unfortunately, it's a fairly expensive endeavor. Well, it's hard to find any, any kind of herbs up on the cloud. It's true. So if it can't be done, then I will continue to spar and um, clean and cook and make nice fruit salads and syrups that we can put on uh, pancakes, perhaps, on the fire that we are burning outside <laughs> the castle. What, uh, what type of halfling are you? Stout. Stout? Like, how would... Would you be in there helping the, uh, the alchemical processes in the brewery at all? Oh, yes, I'd be in, like, a dirty shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not so much that I drink to get drunk, but I can drink a lot. I've got a good constitution, and I am not afraid to sip a little of the medicine that gets poured on wounds. Ren, what have, uh, what have you been doing for the last couple of days here? Other than titanicking over the edge of the, uh, <laughs> edge of the cloud, pretending. <laughs> I believe I can fly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, it's not time for that. Yet. Um, um, just listening to the birds that I can hear and mimicking their sounds to see if they will come closer, and then. Someone said there's an aviary upstairs? There is an aviary upstairs. Occasionally, you see griffins flying in and out of the aviary. Ooh. But uh, it's very, very few. There can't be many up there, because you don't see... It's not like you bong a bell and they just flop away. They're very no. brave. <laughs> and I've been surreptitiously trying to make our ropes longer so that we can get upstairs. <laughs> mm -hmm. With um, some help of my friend. Braiding the tassels from the from the pillows into longer ropes. Well, I'm sure we have a, a few ropes that we can tie together and then sure. have someone climb up and tie it upstairs and then we can all go and have a look out higher up I hear there's books up there. And then you actually have a picture. If you want to set that on Zephyrus's tower, you can show everybody what you look like. You just lay it down the uh, the camera will grab it. And this is your sneak pose? That's my sneak pose. <laughs> nice. You guys, he sneaks very well. You may have never actually seen the sneak pose. <laughs> nope. Fair. Yeah, we have. No. That's good. Toba, what have you been up to in this last few days? I know you're probably looking longingly up at that hole in the sea. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, for the past couple days, I've been in various states of undress, oh, so meticulously tattooing uh, new spells onto my body, and so that the codex can absorb them. I have a codex on my left hand that all my spells get sucked into. And yeah, that's what I've been doing most of the time because I want to get these spells in there oh so delicately. And you also have a picture of what your character looks like to show everybody. I'm a... You can see that his costume that he wears actually matches his uh, his character quite well. Got the red vest and the yellow, yeah. the yellow cloak going on there. I tend to wear like more flashy... Orange colors for my character. Um, he's a hill dwarf and somewhat in uh, darker leagues of like uh, criminal gangs and stuff doing all the tattoo work for them. Uh, you can usually see me wandering around with like bloody bandage of a tattoo that's freshly done. 
I prepare you poultices. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That'd be so helpful. Nobody's ever thought of that before because it takes so long for them to heal. I have to cast <laughs> them huh? oh. for them to heal. Oh, yep, yeah, poultices. <laughs> yeah, I will get those ready. Oh, thank you. Probably made out of the husks. Now you know a banana skin r- properly <laughs> prepared can. <laughs> Oh, cooking so, with Ginny. If you guys don't have inspiration, I want everybody to take inspiration for your for your descriptions of what you've been doing, kind of how you've been role playing your time out. Uh, the first thing I wanted to touch on now there was two things. There was the bag, and then there was looking over the edge. Roll me an investigation, please. Damn God, you're the only one who said you're really looking over the edge to edge to watch where you go. Yes. Hmm. Investigation, you say. Mm-hmm. That's a four. <laughs> well, Man, you, those you looked over the edge to see what's going on, and you uh, you don't want to spend too much time looking over the edge because it's a little unnerving to look a thousand feet down and know that you're heavy and hit the ground hard. <laughs> uh, but yeah. you you've been following the coast. It seems. Because you can see the ocean, and you can see the like the divide between the water and the land. Uh, you can occasionally make make out like little farms and roads. The, there's a very big road that follows the coast now. So we're taking less of a beeline and more of a kind of roundabout. Then, does anybody have? Let me see your sheet there. Just for a uh, you the skill of geography. Yeah, Sam used to play Pathfinder. There's a gazillion skills, and geography sure. is one of them. Knowledge, nature, history, history. History. I have it. If anybody has it as a proficiency, please Ooh. roll it for me. Seven. If this has to do with fae fiends or undead, then I can. <laughs> nope, this 13. is 13? Yes. No worry about Did you say you had it as well? I don't have it, but I do have random spurts of knowledge from my past life. Well, this is more of an inland spurt of knowledge. Yeah, fair. So, I, yeah. You know that the town you were headed to is... You did have to go north, and you are still headed north, but you had to go further inland. Mm-hmm. Then up the coast. Something's screwy. Zephyrus? Oh. Zephyrus is not down here. Yeah, no, he's just something screwy. That's oh. yeah, 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 he is pretty screwy. Uh, the other thing that we wanted to or I wanted to touch on was the bag. So you went and picked up the bag, Jasper. Roll me an arcane sleight of hand. <laughs> well, I assume he because you guys watched them all walk. Six. Away. Six? It's from your line. Matures. It's a bag. You pick up the bag, you can clearly see it's got like a uh, embroidery symbol of what the cultists were wearing, the, the seal of the evil air prince. Do you mind if I take a quick look at it? Anybody else have knowledge arcana as a proficiency? You do. Yep. Go ahead and roll that for me. Hey, that's one I do have. 17. That's good. 18. 18. Also good. <laughs> uh, 26. <laughs> Holy <laughs> monkeys. Wow. Turns out, I don't know why I know this, <laughs> but I have experience with this. Ooh. You've probably tried turning one of these at some point into a wine skin. <laughs> Does anybody want to guess what it is? Bag of bag holding. Of holding. Oh. The three of you know right away this is a bag of holding. <gasps> there was something... Like you, it's empty at the moment, but uh, he threw it on the ground and it flopped open on its own. Oh, that's disturbing. <laughs> Not as disturbing as Somber getting a 26 on military. <laughs> Look, I can't tell you why, but there's a little bit of alcohol involved in that. <laughs> it's got a tang. Yep. 500 pounds of alcohol and 15 pounds worth of weight. That's a good idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can get rid of a donkey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you try to get rid of it, it just doubles my capacity. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So okay. The evening rolls by on the second day. So it's been five days up here, two days since you had the encounter with the cultists. And uh, you notice that it seems to be getting darker in the sky. The clouds around, like the cloud you're on is still nice and fluffy and white mm -hmm. and solid as a rock to stand on. But uh, the sky surrounding you seems to be getting darker. The clouds, clouds look like they're getting heavy with rain. Jasper, your hair is standing on end. There's a lot of static electricity rumbling around. <laughs> I'm wearing chainmail. <laughs> <laughs> um, I keep my distance. <laughs> so you guys, it starts to rain and it kind of forces you inside. The campfire gets out very quickly. Oh, You're probably burning the stems off of the apples or <laughs> something for, for wood. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so you're, you're kind of forced back inside. Um, you guys all have the... The stats I have for you right now on my sheet of paper are correct, right? I think so. I hope so. Ren, mm -hmm. you hear something... Like, it starts to storm outside, but over top of the, the wind... Mm -hmm. And the rain that's kind of buffeting the tower, you can hear flattening again, and it's very similar to what you heard when the uh, the vultures had landed before. So I uh, mimic the sound to uh, everybody. That's what I can hear. <laughs> Why is he making bird noises? He's a bird. He might be trying to tell us something, maybe. Same sound. Same sound. Same sound? Same sound. Heard it before. Okay. No. Oh, Cultist. Oh. Oh. All right. Um, Is that Sam Roos to uh, head towards the door a little bit? Just, you know, keep an eye out. And I'm going to try hollering up for Zephyrus. Um, you've tried, uh, tried actually getting his attention a few times. And no. He's just, he's very enigmatic. That's mm -hmm. one of the largest words I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to uh, drink one of the potions I'd prepared for the day. Okay, does that change your armor or anything? anything uh, yes, it does. Yeah, uh, potion of alacrity, which brings my dexterity stat up by three, while it's giving me disadvantage on all wisdom saving throws. <laughs> so my armor class would then climb to a 20. Okay. So you see the the elemental cultists, there are four of them, each on their own giant vulture land, and they're, they're standing in the rain, the wind and the water don't seem to affect them whatsoever. But being cultists of the air, you're, you're sure that there's a reason. Uh, I would like an initiative from everyone. Oh boy. Right in. Roll with their own oh, oh my goodness. Oh, my mission goes up 19. Somber. 15. Here we go. 18. Jasper. Uh, 13. Ginny. 9. Ren. 15. <laughs> Tova. 19. Kurt. It's looking so good. <laughs> it's delightful. <laughs> Very dark on my side. The uh, the round actually starts with a surprise attack, and even with your crazy new observing feet, you do not see this creature. Mm. Mm. Trying to remember who is the lippiest against the cultists when they were here. I'm. Default? I'll, I'll take the default I, there. Probably me, actually. <laughs> I think I was hiding behind a table there. Te tech Goblin, do you remember who, who was being lippy last game? All of them. <laughs> well, I, I remember being lippy, too, a little bit, but I don't, don't think very much. Well, it came from a good place. <laughs> <laughs> Somber. There's goblins in here. There are goblins in here. He's right. 
you get hit twice. From behind, you get two slam attacks as an invisible force smashes into your back. The first hit doing 10 points of damage and then another 10 after that. Cool. So, yeah. The, uh, Sabra's standing by the curtains looking out. And then all of a sudden, like, boom, you are nearly pushed across the room. Mm-hmm. Mm. You still got, like, what? An eighth of a hit point left? I have four. Yep. Mm-hmm. Solidly. So now we start at the top of the order. Toba. Spinning around, you... At the end. Roll me a perception. Um, yes, I was about to ask. Because <laughs> it's like, if it's invisible, I don't think it's... I mean, there is there is the quump, quump, and Samber flying into a wall. Yeah. This Six. is this is no. not a normal thing that he does. He doesn't just like spontaneously <laughs> slam into the walls. Stumble, Unless maybe. He's... Stumble, yes, I've seen him. It was only a stumble. Stumble. Only a six? <laughs> yeah. So you look around him and you try to see, but you don't see anything around him. Okay, then I guess I will... You do have knowledge arcana, though. Oh, that does make sense, more sense. So I'll quickly do that. Uh, 16. There is probably... From that bag that the elementalist, elemental evil cultists threw, could be like the air elemental that's invisible, or a stalker, or any number of invisible creatures that that would work with an evil cultist of the air. Well, yep. I'm going to dig into my bag and pull out a small uh, white rock chip and toss it towards them as I cast uh, Snullix Snowball Swarm and see if I can hit anything. Uh, let's see, they Action. Annika, can I get you to draw the first level of oh, the it's an tower? So they have to make a deck saving throw. If I don't want to. Uh, they don't have to. They what if I do it. really poorly? That's yeah, lovely. Okay. I did roll a nine. Mm. Are these they four? Take three d6 so there's six damage. across. Yeah. So, or eight across. So roll it up. It doesn't need to be exact. Don't worry too much about it. But it's big. Yeah. Six, seven points. And if you just want to draw the entrance area out too, that's fine as well. Yep, just seven points. Yeah, cold damage. Mm-hmm. There's the entrance. So, like, the yeah. scrap spell, man, is it like throw snowballs so out of nowhere? Four. Or? Um, yeah. Four? Yeah, okay. A magical um, uh, amount of snowballs erupt yeah, from a uh, point that you within range. Mm-hmm. So, and then just a, a bunch of snowballs just start. Yeah. Flying okay. out of the floor. To keep going. It's hail. Right so, luckily enough, yeah. you're not near this spot anymore. Ta-da. They used to be. Yep. You see, uh, you see technology. the snowballs impact something that's kind of in the in that area, and then fall away. But there's definitely something solid there. Okay. So what I'm going to get everybody to do. Yeah. Is place place your, uh, your guys kind of near the doorway there because you were out watching the yes, cultist land. I was hiding under the table as usual. <laughs> Somebody learned their lesson. <laughs> and uh, Andrew, if you want, put that kind of behind or beside you. That is the invisible force. It's a mystery. <laughs> so we kind of multitasked. We did did some uh, combat there to identify where it was while we were drawing the map. Thank you, Annika. <laughs> Jean. Uh, next is Annika. And then I am on deck. All right, so I've seen the snowballs hit it. Yes. So I kind of have an idea where it is. I'm going to let you roll a perception with advantage. Okay. You didn't get the advantage because you didn't. 
Yeah, I you're, couldn't see you're it. You're giving people advantage right now. Yeah. So with advantage, that'd be an 11? You have an, a rough idea where it is. Okay. It happens to be roughly right where that white thing is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to... I am going to do Divine Sense to see if I can really figure out where it is. So what does Divine Sense pick up on? It picks up on Celestial Fiends or Undead or anything affected by the Howl spell. As long as it's not behind total cover. This is an extra planar creature, but it, uh, it doesn't fall under those categories. Okay. So I'm not, it's not lighting up like that, okay? And then... I was really hoping I had a bonus action healing spell, but I do not. <laughs> no healing word? No healing word. Okay. Um, so that is my turn. Okay, so it is my turn. The uh, the leader of the cultists outside, he's he's gotten off and he's he's basically just putting not barring, but he's tying his vulture down to something that's on the ground. Right. Now, he doesn't seem to be in any rush to get inside. He's taking his time doing what he needs to up there. That was 18. Ren, it's your turn. And well, Ren and Sombra, you guys go at the same time. Does it does it matter who goes no, first? Doesn't matter. I'm gonna let Ren go first and you're on deck. You betcha. So you have a little more time to bleed out. There's <laughs> no blood. It's all good. Can't bleed if you don't have a pulse. <laughs> So I can see the elemental. Uh, roll me a perception. Well, your passive perception is uh, screaming on. You can actually see a set of glowing eyes. Ooh. Okay. Disembodied. There's no no body you can see. Just two glowing eyeballs. Kind of like seeing Jasper in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> so, just those two glowing cats. So that's a good oh, oh, that's what we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so many levels so of to get you, through first. That's yes. a good target. I'll pick up my uh, rapier and I'll stab it. Thirteen. Thirteen does not connect. Your, your rapier passes through the air. No. You would have to move your character up one. That's yeah. All. Yeah. Okay, I want you all nice and close for riding next. You mean nothing? <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. No, Are you doing any other actions? Uh, Sombra, it's your turn, and Jasper, you're on deck. All right, this is absolutely the wrong move, and I'm still doing it anyway. We're gonna sweep the legs. It's never the wrong move. Uh, he needs to make me an opposed uh, strength, athletics, or dex uh, um, uh, acrobatics, whichever he'd like. He's got to beat a twelve. Well, I rolled a nineteen. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. Uh, <laughs> nothing there. We're gonna try again. Never mind, I rolled a one. So Samber is like scrambling on the ground, just like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, kicking, and there's, he's not connected with anything as he's like falling over himself in the slushy snowball ice. Uh, did you move up for that? Uh, that's not. That's not that's me. No, I'm already right there. Oh, you're in the dark? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. He was unfortunately close enough to the, the creature from before. Yep. So Jasper, it is your turn, and Ginny, you're on deck. Yeah. 
10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30, 50. I'm going to go right here in the corner. So I'm going to do my feline agility to get close enough to Somber to reach him and cast heroism. Hmm? I think he's going to sing. <laughs> And cast heroism on him. What's um, heroism do for me? Heroism uh, makes you immune to being frightened, and you gain temporary hit points equal to my ability modifier at the start of each of your turns. Okay. Um, which is plus five, so you get five right now. You gotcha. And when the spell turn ends, the target loses all the remaining hit points. So if you what have, the temporary hit points. Okay. There we this, go. this is the quickest way to get you the most amount of health. Right off the start. So temporary hit points uh, don't stack. No. Yes. So at the yes, I get do. yes they do in this do in they? this case they do. Oh, these, they these keep adding, temporary hit points. These ones keep for one growing. minute they keep adding five. Oh, and five fascinating. And okay. So every time it's oh, Christian's wow. turn, you'll get five more hit points. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Do you have for to a minute. On that? Yes. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, concentration spell. They disappear, oh. but. Your four hit points will still be there. Yes, yeah. yeah. Unless you take more than your temporary. Oh, let's yeah. see. Okay. Yep, yeah. yeah, for sure. Okay. Were you doing any other actions? Um, yeah, and uh, as I touch him, I am um, saying, It'll be okay, Somber. It'll be okay, I say to him. And he gets um, Bardic inspiration. a cone. A cone <laughs> of inspiration. A cone of inspiration, you betcha. <laughs> Jimmy. Good stuff. Well, I am very offended by the fragrant abuse of my compatriot, and I'm going to walk up to him. I'm what? going to... Just roll me a perception with advantage. You're right. I shall do that. <laughs> I'm so, so offended, I'm not even waiting. Two and 19 plus a You're good. Bit. Oh, thank you. You can walk up to the... You see those disembodied eyes. They're a little higher than they are for the rest of the guys, but... Oh, you dastardly darvish, and I stab my hand, and my rapier skewer lights up with a lightning blue glow, and I try to... Stick a fork in him. Stick a fork in him, see if he's done. (laughs) I like it. That's a 14 plus 7 for 21 total. 14 plus 7 hits. All right, so it's a D8 plus a D4. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh Double ones for two plus five for seven damage total. What what is the magical damage? Lightning. No. How much was it? Oh one. And how much was the other damage? Six. Why is math so hard? Too much of that one great <laughs> wine. <laughs> <laughs> well, while, while all that was happening, you can hear Jasper over in the corner kind of muttering his song to Somber while he's doing this because he forgot. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I've got to do my song to, to do the spell. And his spell um, is, uh, when a hero comes along with the strength to carry on, Somber is our hero. He will make the day shine bright. You can just hear that in the background with the crackling swords and <laughs> this little kitty in the corner just touching Somber ever so slightly. Nice. Except there's nothing little about you. You're like eight feet tall, <laughs> hunched <Giant>. over <laughs> creepily. In the corner, just in the his, corner, hand, his hand reaching his, his, his tiny, really skinny tiny, hand. Tiny cat tiny paws. Paws. <laughs> so You guys have kind of Boy. stopped looking at the cultists outside. They, uh, the other three, three, three cultists there are doing the same thing there. Tying their birds down and preparing their, getting themselves looking prim and proper. Uh, The last to go is the invisible stalker. The last person to hit me. Hit him hard. Jimmy. Also did take one damage to imbue my weapon with that light. And I will use cutting words on you. Use filthy airbag. How many it's a reaction. reaction. You, okay. <laughs> and you, you will have to take a minus four to uh, your attack. Your yeah. Your oh, attack ability. Your attack ability check or damage roll. So the one you're rolling. Attack right now. roll. 
Minus four would make both of my rolls a negative number. That's amazing. Hey. I rolled a three and a four. I, 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 I'm gonna, much I'm gonna do it than what I rolled for you. I, I hope still so. gonna do it before you give me the results. So. Yep. So yeah. So there's another. You thing. feel two gusts of air swoosh right by your head. Oh dear, that's too slow. You'll have to be faster next time. <laughs> Tove, oh, it's your turn, and Annika, you're on deck. Oh, and you can see, and we can see the eyes. Yeah. You don't need, once you come in, what you do? Do great. Okay. Who wants to play footsie with? That would be me. Did you ever know that you're going to leave me? I did just learn that in the creepiest way possible. <laughs> the horrifying cat monster. Hey, I was only oh. touching you with one hand. You don't know what the other one was doing. Yeah. Oh. So I'm gonna I was whip just out at him myself with a lightning. What's wrong with you people? <laughs> so oh, sorry, lightning lure. Um, he has to make a strength saving throw. Ooh, it's probably not good. For him. Seven. Yes. Ooh. Gains a thirteen, so he gets pulled ten feet towards me. Nice. Because this isn't a uh, oh. something that he's doing willingly, you guys don't get the attacks. Oh, oh. They don't get it Annika, anyway. you m- <laughs> no. might because of your sentinel. Right. I don't know. No, uh, he, it's he's invisible. Yeah. Yeah. There's no attacks opportunity. Yeah. Is it only um, ten foot squares? They're five foot. They're five foot. Oh, so right. Yes. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, and he's not within the five feet. Oh, he's right up to me. No, <laughs> he no, wouldn't no, be. He'd be one five ten. One one square way. Yeah. No, no. they're. Oh, He's five foot squares. Oh, yeah, okay. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. He. Uh, he's not five feet. He's not in my five foot range. Yeah. Uh, so he doesn't yeah, take the lightning damage. I miscalculated that. Oh. You could move forward. I moved my that. twenty-five already. Oh, okay. Well, yes. Damn these <laughs> short dwarven legs. <laughs> but you did pull him away from. Solar. I did pull him away. So. Uh. Did you have any other actions you wanted to do? Uh, that was... I bleed from the car oh. from the table. <laughs> <laughs> like, Ren, I don't remember attacking you with the invisible stalker, you okay? Yeah, yeah that was uh, all bleeding. my actions that I could do. <laughs> Janice, you know Janice pokes me into her. Be your skewer, skewer, skewer on the battlefield. <laughs> oh yeah, you don't have it. You just have the pan. <laughs> you can heat it and clotterize them. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's a painful uh, Annika, way to do it. It hey. is your turn. Oh, and what? <laughs> and then that is my turn. It's moved. Okay, so I can still figure out where it is, though, right? Or do I need yes, to do you perception should, again? You were able. Have you haven't seen it yet? I really haven't. Make been able your to see perception it with advantage still, because yeah. we've been whacking at it. Get <laughs> out. Nine. Oh. No. <laughs> No, ten, eleven. <laughs> You're still not quite sure where he is. The creature is nigh invisible, except for two small points. What do I have that's AOE? <laughs> My sword if I swing it hard enough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, Annika, you're you're Something that's gonna get it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Tova, that spell you cast, does it like knock it prone or anything like that, or just pulls uh, it towards you? It pulls it towards me, and if it gets within five feet, it deals 1d8 worth of lightning damage. Ooh. He's okay. a magnet. I am going to assume it's. I saw the lightning lash go that way. Yeah. So I'm going to move that way, and I'm going to try to hit it. And if you want to impose disadvantage on that. Oh, very much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Go for it. Ooh. That's better, but that would be a 16 to hit. No. Yeah. Because he's invisible, he still has a lot of extra <sighs> like extra covers and hardnesses. So I take hit. a big old swing, and I'm like, ah, <laughs> where is swing it? Swing and a miss. <laughs> Boy, it's my turn. The cultist leader has finished uh, tying his bird down to something in the clouds. Can't quite see what it is on the ground. But he uh, starts walking slowly towards the tower, calling, Zephyrus! Zephyrus, we have come again. 
We demand audience. He's slowly walking towards the tower, being very demanding, borderline belligerent in his uh, demands for Zephyrus to come address them. That was in. Ren, it is your turn now, and Sombra, you're on deck. You got it. Mm. Rapier didn't work the last time. You do still know where he is. Yeah. And once you pass the test and see where it is, I'm not making you guys okay. continue. I plan on rolling better and making this harder. <laughs> right? I think you're good. This level seems okay. Yeah. Hmm. We've hit it once. It's all but taken one of us out. Mm-hmm. Fair. If you're not going to use your hit points, what's the point of having them? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> That's harsh. <laughs> I am going to try casting Tasha's hideous laughter. Mm-hmm. All right. The eyes and see if that works. What is that? And the wisdom save? Yes, it is. Against 14. He fails. Well, it fails. <laughs> Does it have some giggles in him? It is nearly terrifying to listen to. <laughs> From right. an it's invisible point just below the eyes, you hear <laughs> like horrible hacking and coughing laughter that sounds <laughs> horrifying. <laughs> I'm not going to make you guys roll fear mm-hmm. by that much. Okay? <laughs> what does that impose on the, uh, the creature? Um, it basically is prone. Uh, the creature with intelligence uh, okay. at the end of each of its turns and each time it takes Damage the target can make a wisdom saving throw. It just basically. He's incapacitated. Incapacitated. So he, he gets a chance to save himself. Does so it that, say incapacitate or prone? Uh, prone. Okay. Becoming so, incapacitated and unable to stand for the duration. Yeah. So we have advantage to hit it, which negates the disadvantage. Yeah. From so point. he's basically. Cool. You can hear quite easily where the attack is coming from. It's actually immune to the prone. It is immune to it the prone? It is condition immunity to prone. Oh. oh. So we can see it. The, the whole... <laughs> it definitely not have it. I know where it is now. Yeah. <laughs> it has no legs to be... Does, so does incapacitated still give us advantage to attacks? Normally? Uh, yes. Okay. So and it's the same effect, huh? I'm going to move yeah. away from the door because those people are way too loud. <laughs> incapacitated, the creature can't take actions or reactions. So I'm going to move out of the doorway oh. because they're going to have it. Okay. He's just... Okay. Somber, you return. His threat Jasper is, is on deck. Right. You can clearly see the eyes now. They're right above where the horrifying sound of death laughing is coming from. Well, I don't especially care for this fella, person. So, Sombra is going to roll up, and and I do that, mean that a little literally. There's a bit of a roll in, in getting moving again. <laughs> and he barrels into the guy, if you can just get him close. And uh, we're going to start swinging a little bit. Uh, oh, I lose the crit. It does a... Uh, 19 hit him? 19 does. Hey! I'm gonna sock it to him. <laughs> Do you have, are you at the monk level where your attacks count as a magical attack count? Uh, I believe that's next level. Okay. So that is, uh, six, uh, six bludgeoning. Non-magical. Then we're gonna go ahead and flurry. Oh, did you say that he gets in a save after every attack? So he takes? Uh, at the end of each of its turns, and each time it 
takes damage, the target can make another wisdom saving throw. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Slap one, nothing. Slap two, I'm going to use the inspiration. Uh, that would be an 18, so that's a 10, that's 15, 19 to hit. Nice. How much damage? That is seven. And then we're going to, uh, yeah, we're going to back away. We are disengaged, so that's all good. We're going to go just five feet the other side of them there. Like this way? Uh, over on your, close to you. Right there? Yeah, that looks good to me. And Jasper, it is your turn, and Ginny is on deck. Before you do, go, go, I just want to make a note here. It's like the first time a player has used inspiration without being poked to use the inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> like, as a bard, that's got to just be an amazing feeling. It is. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, take your five. Five more hit points. Oh, five more thank you. points. Um, and I will just take up my crossbow and aim at the glow, right between the glowy red eyes. And that is a 22 to hit. I believe you have struck the creature. Uh, six damage. The uh, the arrow slows down as it passes through this, the point, and then it, it passes back out the other side. It just kind of falls to the ground. <laughs> oh. Or the cloud, I guess, as the case may be. And his save for the... Laughter. Oh, it's an advantage. If he took damage, sorry. Oh, jeez. Oh. Uh, he passed on the first Oh, one. and the d6 okay. of sneak attack damage as well. Sorry. So that would have been 10 damage. How much more? Uh, four. Okay. All right. All right. So I've moved myself forward towards where the glowy eyes are. This rolls with disadvantage, correct? No. No. Okay. So that's oh, I, I'm a halfling. <laughs> oh, I'm a halfling. That <laughs> I don't know. That's two natural ones in a row. You, if you get a one, you can get a row. You get three. You get three per game. So you've got one no. left. Oh, if you right. want to use it. Do it. Doing it. Ten. <laughs> Plus seven. That's a one and a zero. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very binary today. Um, Seventeen for total. That hits. Excellent. Do you still have the magical damage on I your do. weapon? do. Okay. So that is a total of Ooh. nine regular damage and four lightning damage. For Thirteen. The, uh, your weapon, you can feel it passing through, and the lightning damage seems to crackle through the air, outlining a body just just for the briefest of moments before the electricity dissipates. Mm. But you see it almost looks like a circulatory system running through it just for a moment mm. as the electricity zaps you. Take that, you ghosty. <laughs> Doesn't like electricity. Gotcha. My great aunt Petunia had a similar cackle. No one ever told jokes around her. So you are not aware of what's happening outside. Horrifying backstory. <laughs> the uh, invisible stalker is still not impressed with you. Unfortunately, you you go right before he does, so he kind of is going to be focusing. Can I see him this time? Yes. Okay. <laughs> So he, I'm going to use my reaction, he has disadvantage on that attack roll. Nice. The first one misses because of that. It would have hit. The second one misses as well. Does the second attack also have disadvantage? uh, Disadvantage on the attack roll. And I use use my reaction, so it's just the one. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if he's attacking somebody else also, the other thing I'm going to do is attack him. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Well, he yeah, is definitely sense. trying to attack Ginny. You can feel those, like, just 
swift rushes of air running past you that probably riffle through your hair and knock your hat off. I just said this this morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Annika, you were doing... Yes. Do are I... you allowed to do two reactions? It's not a reaction to a sentinel. Oh, it's not? It's... I don't think so. Neat. Maybe I need to check that. I'll let you do it now, but I need to between sessions, to just it. check it. Yeah. So I don't think it's a reaction. Cool. And do I have disadvantage on it? No. Okay, just Take regular? Away. The spells helped you see it, and the 21. spells have helped you focus in on where it is. 21 to hit it. Ooh, that is a connection. Love it. You can use your reaction to make that'll be is it a reaction? It's a reaction. Alright, so I can't make that attack. But it was so cool in your head. <laughs> he was you very saw cool. every he moment had, of it. Yeah, disadvantage of it. Uh, <laughs> so we are back at the top of the list again. Tova, it is your turn. And okay. Annika is on deck. Uh, if I move here, he's still ten technically ten feet away. Yeah, you were taking it. Okay, yeah. so I have to be here for 15. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Okay. So I'm going to move over that way. And I'm going to cast Burning Hands. Ooh. I clap my hands together and give them a spread out. And my arm starts glowing a funny blue as I switch the energy from fire to lightning. Ooh. So it ha I have to make a ranged spell attack for it. I'm 10. Is Burning, Burning Hands, is, a, is it's, an error, a, it? it's an AoE, so I would have a, a save. Oh, oh was I, I was probably reading another one. <laughs> oh no, you get a deck save. Sorry, I was reading Firebolt on the gotcha. previous one. So, I had so that he's going to take half damage. Okay. But he is still connect he is still catching a piece of that light. Sorry, I was reading Firebolt okay. yep. prior to this. Make it burn. Oh wow. Oh. 18. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Max damage. Love it. Which is only nine. <laughs> Who cares? You roll three six. That's but still yeah. some of the most but still. damage he's taking. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, once again the the electricity that hits it flows through its body just ever so briefly, and you see him it almost like cringe in pain. The electricity that misses dissipates almost instantly, though. Annika, so it doesn't. doesn't Annika, get any Annika and Ginny feel a little tingle. Yeah. <laughs> go up. Don't jump to the chainmail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take a brief intermission so that I can get all my hit points back. <laughs> and then we'll come right back, okay? So uh, we'll give you guys 15 minutes and then we'll make it back to the table here, okay? All right. Yay! Hey, Tech Goblin. I have a joke for you. If a group of crows is called a murder and a group of hyenas are called a cackle, what do you call a group of goblins? Uh, I don't know. Why? Annoying. <laughs> I hate you! Uh, that was episode 9 of Moose Jaw Gamers and No Good Rolls, Just Good Role Playing. It was previously recorded while streaming on Twitch. Check out their channel for live streams. Please like and subscribe here and on Twitch. You can see the continuation of their adventure in about a week's time. See crying? <laughs> <laughs>